All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to the Bring the Juice podcast. We are here with a hot, hot episode in Fresno. I got Jalen Johnson here with Chicago Bears QB1, Justin Fields. First we go to rock, then we go to fall, then we let it pop, don't let it go. All right, Justin, welcome to Fresno. Appreciate you. First time, First time here. First time here. Yeah. First time in Fresno. Tell me about nothing it. Nothing but good, you know. Yeah. Uh, didn't really know what to expect coming in, but shoot, it's been a good vibe. You know, been so chilling. Far, so, so, so far, so good. Like I you said. Yeah. Good you vibes. happy? Good vibes. You happy? I mean, it's the no, man. I want it. Five, it's five, five nine. No, man. I'm gonna, get, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get it branded on me someday. I think. I don't know. But no, you're not. Jalen, right. talk to me. What brings us together here at this table is Kebby's vision. Mm-hmm. Okay. What's the vision now? What's it in the future? Take me through the full scoop right now. I know we've chopped up about this. I know you guys had a long day. Get your piss hot, John. J- Jalen, get it going. God damn, John. <laughs> Jalen, so let's do it. How about you? Uh, Kevy's vision. Uh, I think for me, it's just really about expanding. Uh, we've been in it for two years now, and really just trying to expand what we've been doing. We've been doing Christmas carnivals, been doing some sponsorships and donations and things like that. And I feel like it's time to take it to another level. And I think the golf tournament and this fundraiser turning out the way it did was just a step in the right direction in that. Um, and just really continue to bless the Fresno community, bless the Valley, and then take it to Chicago and continue to bless those communities as well. And I think it can be really something special, just looking for more support. Um, I think we're, we're we're doing really good right now. I think yeah. we're we're setting some new goals, setting some new things that we want to do. And I feel like at this point, it's it's nothing that we we can't attain. I think it's just about having the right plan, and that's what we're developing now in the off season, going into season, figuring out what we're going to do for 2024, um, and then really just going going forward from there. Fire me up, Justin. You flew all the way from Chicago. I know yeah. you're in the heat of it right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that talks a lot about you know your support for your teammate. And the type of character you have. Yeah. What, what? Tell me how. How did this all become about? You guys became buddies early. I mean, how, you're clearly supporting a good cause. Mm-hmm. Why are you here today? Yeah, I mean, like you said, really just to you know help my boy out, his foundation out. So um, you know, whenever I got got the chance to help, he hit me up. What I think two, probably two months ago. You know, asked me about mm-hmm. it early on. Uh, so I just tried to make sure I didn't have anything on my schedule going on but yeah anytime I get to help my teammates especially out something out with you know something positive something he's trying to do for the community um you know I'm with it so um you know uh and as far as buddies goes I feel like I feel like our relationship grew naturally like you know um grinders yeah grinders or locked in grinders yeah not for sure but you know being offensive defensive side of the ball like we weren't (laughs) talking a lot off rip but every now and then in the uh, locker room you know his his locker's right past the door so say what's up to him and then I mean we just got got to talking more and more so I feel like our relationship grew like that and um you know just knowing Jalen knowing knowing the kind of guy he is um you know it's I'm not gonna say no to coming out here helping him out so um definitely had to come do that for sure well, I, I'm sure you're appreciative. I'm appreciative. Indeed, indeed. I'm glad we're in the 559 in my mom's basement. Uh, <laughs> chop it up. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> right? That's- right? I mean, you know, you, Jalen, in the community, you're upcoming, you're young, you're in, you're, you guys are both leaders, okay? I'm going to ask you both separate, but Jalen, let's start with you. What is the biggest trait you see or take pride in as a leader? Ooh. I would say, honestly, I would say leading by example, I feel like doing things right within yourself. I feel like you got to start there. I think leadership starts with your actions. And I think even being a leader, I think what I've learned about leadership is kind of putting putting others above yourself. I think even like Justin being a leader, I mean, it's one thing to say like, oh, yeah, he's just coming out of there. It's important. But I think for an example of leadership is coming out here and taking time out of out of your day, out of your weekend, um, sacrificing your time for a greater cause bigger than just you. And I think being a leader is something that you have to display. It's not something you can talk about. It's not something you can fake. It's not something that somebody can just say, oh, yeah, you're a leader. But at the end of the right. day, it all comes back to back to your actions, what you're willing to sacrifice, what you, what you believe in, what you're willing to put above yourself. And I think for me, it's kind of just walking in that authentically um, and knowing kind of when and where to lead. And I think even with leading, you have to know when when to follow and who to follow at the same time. So I think it's really just well about projecting your actions the right way and going about your business the right way and then other, and also being able to learn from others and their actions as well. Yeah, I mean. It's hard to follow up. Hard to follow. I mean, I feel like he hit every point, to be <laughs> yeah. honest with you. Like, 
Um, he said, you know, I think leadership starts with yourself, you know, make, making sure you're doing everything uh, the right way and really just trying to make, you know, everybody else better around you, um, surrounding yourself around good people, uh, people with right. the same same goals, same uh, uh, mission as you and really just trying to make them better. Like with, you know, this foundation, I'm trying to make it the best it can be. That's why I'm here right now. So, um, you know, um, just, just trying to make everything uh, the best it can be, especially it's for a good cause, so. Um, but other than that, you know, he he hit everything on the shit. Head, amen but, to that, man. Yeah, <laughs> right, seriously, did I appreciate and, it? And yeah. you know, me and me and Johnny knew we, Johnny is uh, Jalen's older brother. We uh, we have had a relationship, and me and Jalen's relationship, I feel like, has mm-hmm. definitely blossomed as for as sure. friends and leaders of the the young community. For sure, We're, you're young, and I mean, you're trying to make a difference, you're trying to do something positive in the in the world. And I think I like what you said, Jalen, about you know, so you got to know when to lead and when to follow. Right. That takes uh, it takes a man to understand when time is to step up and when time to you know fall back and follow your elders and people maybe more experienced and like mm-hmm. I mean Justin you're in the unique position of quarterback which is uh, it's different than every position because yeah. you could be any position and be a natural born leader be the hardest worker be the grittiest that got first one in last one out all that crap mm-hmm. but being a quarterback itself there is a natural I don't want to call it a chip, but there's a natural checkbox you have to check of, I need to be a leader of this team. Yeah. Did you feel any, in your time of being a quarterback throughout all the experience you've had, whether it's the NFL, college, all that, have, how have you said, hey, I need to come in, gain control of this, this locker room, this offensive line, this huddle? Yeah. Like, how do you, how do you grab the bull by the horns and wrestle it? Because yeah. I know it's different for a QB. It just mm-hmm. is. It is. Oh, 100%. It is. I was like, I ain't never played yeah, quarterback. Yeah, me either. I can't throw a shit, bro. My yeah, shoulders nah, are fucked nah. up. That's nah. different. I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely different, but um, I think how you do that, how you show everybody, you know, how hard you work, just like Jalen said, by your actions, because um, they, they, they see you every day in the building. So really just, you know, your actions coming in, uh, working hard, and, you know, they're, they're going to see that just, just naturally and really just being yourself. You know, I know some guys, they, they try to come in and, try to kind of force, you know, being a leader. But I feel like if you just come in and be yourself, like everybody's going to gravitate towards you. Right. Um, you know, because that's, that's really what everybody wants in general, just just realness. Um, you know, so I just try to come in, be myself, uh, work hard because I want to be great. I know the people on our team want to be great. So I think if they see that, you know, um, you know, they'll have no choice but to, you know, follow me. And, you know, I'm, I'm not – I wouldn't say I'm the perfect leader at all, but you know, there's there's you know other leaders on the team like Jalen, like some other guys uh, on the offensive side of the ball, to where you know they might have different ideas to where we all come together. But right, um, you know, us working together, us you know working towards the same goal, uh, you know, that's that's what brings brings everything together. So um, just just coming in, being myself, um, you know, showing everybody that you know this is my top priority. Right, um, I'm here to win and you know win a Super Bowl so um, I think that's how you got to come in that's the kind of mindset you got to have you got to be confident right you know in yourself and just 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 lead that way so yeah. is there and, and I this just came off the dome here but like because the quarterback role is so essential of being like a captain I know sometimes I've been on football teams maybe you guys have in the past where they force a certain person to be a captain just because they're a quarterback mm-hmm. being a young guy does there is there pressure when you first start off in something like the NFL to be a captain, even though you're quote unquote not experienced quite yet? Yeah, I mean not really. I don't even think my rookie year. I don't think we had captains, right? When Coach Nagy was here, we didn't have captains. Yeah, or we had rotating captains. Yeah, right, right, right. Right. That yeah. creates a better environment. That little, yeah. little more mm, earn, earn it or what? I feel like people have mixed feelings about that. Uh, just rotating captains, but um, I mean regardless, um, whether there's rotating captains, whether there's captain set in stone. Um, I'm gonna come in the same way, at, you know, every day. Uh, you know, I just, you know, with with or without that name play, I'm gonna come in the same way. Uh, you know, the the team, uh, my my teammates are gonna see. Right. You know, it doesn't matter who I am. See yeah, you're exactly. You, you, you're coming regardless. Exactly. So uh, I think that's just the main point. You know, I can, I'm gonna be the same person with or without the C. It's it's it's, it's really just a name play. So. Um, but. Yeah, I mean that's that's kind of my, my mindset about the whole captain thing. So there wasn't any really uh, added pressure to you know coming in and being that captain for it. 
But I'm not going to say, I, if, if I wasn't named the captain last year, I definitely would have felt some type of way. But, <laughs> <laughs> nah, but nah um, I, I, I definitely would have still came in the same way, though, for sure. There's, there's so much, and I know you guys are good at this, and I, and I like to preach this on Bring the Juice, like, there's so much BS in the outside noise these days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And athletes, I think, at every level, like, even in your small community of, just Twitter alone now, like, the small community of social media has created it to where haters come in all different shapes, forms, sizes, mm -hmm. burner accounts, BS, the other, the other teams, you know, dad safety, who's got burnt, who's like, you know, F this guy and all that bullshit. Like yeah. there's so much bullshit in the world, but at the same time, like we're human beings. Like, I mean, I'm in my twenties, you guys are in your twenties. Like mm -hmm. a man is a man at the end of the day. What do you do to block out the outside noise and, stay in control of your mental health and i'm gonna ask you both for an answer on this jalen let's start with you what do you do to block out the noise <laughs> hmm. i think when you gotta know when to put your put put the phone down to like step yeah. away from it right and i right. think a lot of the times guys get caught up in like the positive side of social media or oh, wanting to post and show everything right, right. that they're doing look at me I'm but here. yeah and then on the flip side of that it's like too when you're not doing <laughs> I'm just la I'm just laughing at his little ad lib. He's funny. But so I mean, just like really, you gotta just know when to when, when to put the phone down. And I think even for me, like I I did it a few times with like going through season. Like man, like I, I didn't put my phone down. Like, I'm not really concerned right. about posting these game day flicks, these tunnel flicks. Like nah, I just yeah. But also at the same time, like dude, you grow up, and what do you look at? You see the it, now it's overthought, right? But like you used to look at the photo shoots back in the day when mm -hmm. you were in seventh grade and go, bro, yeah. I would love to rock those gloves with the fucking logo on them type of yeah. shit. Like I would love to run through that tunnel. I'd love to yeah. do all these things. And now it's like I mean, you feel like that until you, you, you get those to. DMs. Exactly. So I mean, it's all yeah. like, it's different. So like every like kids don't really understand. And I even <laughs> I've told my kids that like this at the at my camp that I had last year. Like everybody wants to be in the NFL. Everybody wants to go D one. Everybody wants to play at the high level. Until it's until it's really time for you to accept what comes with that, and it's like whether that's hard work, whether that's criticism, whether that's failure, whatever that may be. I feel like there's a lot of things that kids don't don't think about when they dream these dreams, or like right. you really set these goals, and it's like yeah, you're looking at it kind of one sided, and it's like expected because I mean you don't a lot of kids don't know, but it's like it's double edged sword. Yeah, hundred percent. So it's like a lot of the times like you can have a great game, and then I get beat on the game when it passes. And now it's like all these DMs are are coming to me, and it's like. Uh, I just had this game. I played it probably about a 93% grade. And now all of a sudden, like, everybody DMing me this, this, and this. And it's like, man, I just played a great game. And I, like, messed up on one play. And I think sometimes, like, being in the NFL, like, being now in college, it's kind of turned into a miniature <laughs> NFL at this point or right, right. pro. So it's like you kind of – I mean, you kind of just have to accept what, what comes with it and know when to step when to step away from it. And I think faith also plays a big part of it as well, not finding your identity in yeah. social media or in what people are saying and kind of just remaining true to yourself and true to your beliefs and knowing who you are outside of the football. And I feel like a lot of times people would kind of just treat you accordingly with that helmet on. It's like right. when I take it off, I'm still this human. I'm still this man. I'm still this human well, being. I, we preach that on bringing this all the time, man. Like the thing is that people – they don't understand that the, there's a huge disconnect, especially in football. Athletes in general, they're looked at as objects versus human beings. Mm -hmm. And football, especially because you got a helmet on, they don't see your face very much. Yeah. You, and we know this when you put your pads on the helmet, you feel like a you feel like a superhero at some point. Mm -hmm. You could feel invincible, but when those DMs hit hard enough, and, mm -hmm. and I've had world champion boxer on here, was 28 and 0, had the belt, Olympian, the whole thing. And he lost his first fight after 12 years as a pro. Yeah. And he's, and he, and he, Jose Ramirez. Mm -hmm. Yeah, indeed. Dog, dog, mm -hmm. dog. And we <laughs> dog. Later. But he said, he goes, you know what, man? I block out the outside noise. I'm positive vibes. He gives back to his community, all this stuff. He goes, I just don't understand why some, you know, user 00284678 fucking chicken wing says, yeah. You're a bum. Like, bro, what did I do to you? Like, I'm... Lost some of that money. Don't bet on me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you put got, that shit on me. You feel me? me? Like, they got $300 in their bank account betting they whole thing on me right. to do something. Like, bro, that come on. Now you mad at me. That's what I'm saying. Come on now. you DMing me. Not, not, not <laughs> you DMing me. You mad at me. I totally... No, you hate me. And I understand. I mean, I mean, Justin, what do you guys say? What do you do to block out the outside noise? And and I, I'm going to be honest. I do... I told you. 
I saw two things from my research on you. Because mm. I'm prepared. I'm a good podcaster. Yeah. Can I get some props real quick? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> We're elevating. Manscaped, Fresno First Bank, American Pistachios, Dervostelli, do it all. Anyways, my point is, mm -hmm. it's very difficult to block out the outside noise. It's very difficult to stay on track with things. But you stay very humble and business only and you, you you're handling the task at hand which yeah. is so for me as now once athlete now boss business owner farmer husband maybe someday father mm -hmm. i want to translate that same energy that manscape gonna help you get there my boy 20 percent off <laughs> use code bring the juice <laughs> but i'm saying how do you stay so cool calm and collected how have you calloused your mind to make it to where you say hey, i'm gonna have that elite mindset to be great yeah um i feel like it's really just on how i was raised you know my dad always you know taught me to be humble um you know no matter how much success you have in your sports it's really just you know staying true to who you are um and he always used to tell me when I was younger, you know, pride comes right before the fall. So just staying humble at, at all times. And mm. to be honest, I deleted Twitter like a few months ago. Like people just be saying whatever on there. And Nothing but bad vibes. 100% of the time, 99% of the time, whatever, they'll never say it to your face. So they just be saying whatever on Twitter. But um, yeah, I deleted Twitter. And to be honest, the only reason I haven't, you know, deleted IG is because of my marketing stuff. So, um, right. I mean, it makes me money on there. But... Yeah, bro, to block that out, I don't even listen to it. I don't read nothing positive. I don't read no articles, nothing. And I used to do that all the time. Like, right. I used to... When, when did you, you feel stop? Me? Um, probably when I got to the league. Yeah. You know, you know I think when I got to the league, um, I probably reached most of my struggles in because, you know, I went to Georgia, Ohio State. We, we never really lost. So I, I got my first taste of actually losing like that when I got drafted in, into Chicago. So, um, you know, it was, it was it was different for me, something that I had to get um, adjusted to. But, yeah, bro, but I just deleted Twitter, like, you know, probably at, right after the offseason just to get my mind off of things and just live life. I feel like just in general, like, people just live their lives through social media way too much to where, you know, they forget in the real world. So, um, yeah, that's, that's what I do. I just, like, literally don't even look at it. So it's not Justin, hard Justin, give them a little context of who you – who your dad, and not who your dad is, but like what your, what your dad did or does. What like, just in terms of his job and stuff like that. Yeah, or what? yeah. yeah I think so, it kind of goes. Yes. Yeah, so, so my dad's a cop. Uh, you know, he was in the Marines for I think 15 years. So yeah. um, yeah, he's been a cop for. Well, he's retired now, but he was a cop for about 20 years. But um, yeah, he was a cop for Atlanta, and then um, in high school he worked at my school. So. Uh, I'm very close to my dad, very close to my pops. Uh, that's that's really my best friend. He knows everything, everything that I've been through. So, um, you know, every time that I'm going through something, struggling with something, I'll always hit him up and he'll, you know, give me some good advice and stuff like that. And I usually take it to heart because he knows how I'm feeling. He knows he knows me probably the best the, the best out of anyone. So, um, yeah, bro, uh, that's 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 my dude right there. But um, hit him up for everything. So, yeah. Again, I did my research, and I think we all could agree at this table. You know, as an athlete, there's a lot of attributes to your life that help you drive to success. Mm -hmm. One for me, Jalen, I know we've talked about it on the mm -hmm. pod before, one for you, and Justin, I've heard you talk to people about it, but like, how does faith come into that? And I'm not a yeah. religious podcast. I'm drinking Hennessy right now. Yeah. I've dropped about 50 <laughs> F-bombs in the last hour. Yeah. But at the same time, I know as an athlete, I would be nothing. I just got married a couple weeks back. Mm -hmm. I want my relationship to have a lot of attributes, but God, our faith needs to be part of that foundation. And being an athlete, you have all these conversations in your head where, you know, you're you're chasing greatness, bro. You're trying to be the yeah. best version of yourself at a high level. Jalen, you as well. Right. Everyone has their vices. Mm -hmm. Everyone has shit. Shit hits the fan for everyone at some point in their life. Yeah, for sure. Some people, they tweet about it. They Instagram about it. Some people keep it built up in here like a, like a fucking cage. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you got it. So, if you could turn to God, yeah. it does help. Yeah. How, how do you all both keep faith in your life? Just I'm going to start with you this time because Jalen's been fucking. I like what Jalen said earlier. Though. I, think it's, <laughs> I think it's finding your identity in Christ and not letting, you know, uh, not having to be validated by what anybody else has to say 
Um, you know, the culture we live in right now is just crazy to where it's like, you don't know what people are on nowadays, but um, really just, you know, I've, 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 I grew up in the church, you know, grew up going to church uh, each and every Sunday. My grad, my dad was actually a deacon in the church, so I was, you, you really? know, in there early morning. <laughs> and, you know, well, shoot, you black church. Serving donuts after lunch. Yeah, the whole hey, shit. It used to be five hours, so you used to be in there all Sunday, but... Um, I heard you're a good singer, too. Yeah. Uh, I used to be. I feel nah. like... <laughs> <laughs> A little bit, because I feel like you're gonna ask me to do it on here, but nah. No, um, no, no. I need someone to sing the national anthem at my upcoming uh, my charity boxing event coming up. Mm, so I gotta practice for that. I might but fly I, you out. I, I might fly you out. Practice. Tell you what. I gotta practice, I'll but I'll let you know if I'm ready. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. Bet. 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 What's yeah. Jalen's gonna be. There. <laughs> you know, Anyways, man. continue. Back to yeah. faith, man. Locky. But yeah, it's really just you know having that foundation, like like Jalen said. Um, you know, if you're you know grounded in Christ, um, I feel like there's nothing that can come your way that can you know mess you, you up lose. of course yeah you, you can't lose so um no matter how far you want you wander off you know because i've wandered off at times i've gotten distracted by you know the world the stuff uh you know uh, being a quarterback there's a lot of stuff that comes with it there's a lot of distractions out there this and that so um but just just having that foundation in christ knowing that you know god's never gonna uh abandon you and stuff like that and just having that relationship with him and really just trying to grow uh with him and get you know stronger spiritually that's you know, what I really tried to uh, hone into this offseason is really right. just getting closer to him and, you know, just uh, having, you know, Bible study devotionals with myself each and every morning. By yourself? Yeah, just by myself. That's some grown-ass man just, shit, just, bro. Just writing it down. Respect like, to you. No, 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 dead ass, dead ass, bro, because that, that's yeah. some demons you face. <laughs> no, no, I'm not laughing at <laughs> Nah, but I used to just, you know, <laughs> read the little verse of the day and uh, keep it pushing, but I just felt like I could take a next step and yeah. kind of just – you know, read it, write it down, reflect on the verse, and um, just yep. just just keep it going like that. So um, I got the app. Yeah, I got, I the, got app. the app. What do you do with that? So what time do you wake up every day? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what time do you wake up every day? Not yeah, early. not only in farmer know. time. Well, yeah, not no three thirty like you said yeah. earlier. That's crazy. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. So I wake <laughs> That's up. That's crazy. And this isn't some adult shit. And I I really I really do on this pod. I'm blessed to be able to say, I try to take the experiences that you guys have. I didn't make it to the league. Yeah. I walked on. I earned my scully. I tried to go to the Olympics. It failed. I'm an onion farmer. I'm back. I'm doing a podcast. Yeah. Trying to spend positive vibes into the world. Hopefully, somebody who is a banker, accountant, financial advisor, boss, Chick-fil-A, uh, chicken wing, fryer. Like, I don't give a shit what you are yeah. in this world. If you're grinding, this is something you could listen to. Mm -hmm. To other grinders who you idolize. And I try to make that connection of... you. I'm not saying you athletic ability, you, you shit on an, the average accountant, but I'm saying yeah. like from a grind perspective, mm -hmm. dude, we're always grinding. Yeah, no, we're always sure. chasing greatness. Yeah. So how can I take that same mindset that got me so far in athletics and kick ass and whatever else I'm doing as a father, as a husband, as a business owner, as a podcast host, as a friend, as a uh, nonprofit supporter, whatever the hell it might be in this world, what can I do to chase greatness? And like, it's not easy, but like having y'all on really, people can reflect on that. Because right. mm -hmm. it, it's not just, there's levels to this shit. There is. Yeah. There's levels to this shit. Yeah. I don't know what to say, but there is. So here y'all talk about the faith. Again, I ain't a religious podcast. I'm not trying to convert anybody. Yeah, no. Sure. All I'm trying to say is like, in my family, it is part of our formula of success. Yeah. You work your butt off. You have a good attitude. You have high effort. You do that. You control the controllable. Yeah. That's a big part, for sure. And you know what? At the end of the day, you're nothing without God. Yeah. Anyways, off that, off that, off that, off that. My bad. Is that too deep? Am I, nah. am I, am I, am nah, I passionate now? Nah, I mean, you can definitely, you, you can go I deeper. <laughs> you can go I deeper. could go deeper. But, I got yeah. a shovel right in my pocket. Pause. That's all I'm just saying. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Let's backtrack two strikes. I got, I got two more questions. Let's go. All right, so listen. I told you earlier, I had a guy, Chris Boyd on, uh, safety, transfer from Minnesota, to Arizona. Sorry, transfer. He got traded from Minnesota <laughs> to, <laughs> to the Cardinals. Right. NIL. What are you going to do? <laughs> this dude played at Texas. Mm -hmm. He claims the Big 12 is better than any conference. Justin and Jalen, because you played in the Pac-12. You played in the Big 10 and in the SEC. Yeah. What's the dominant conference in, in, in the country? I think the two I played in, SEC and the Big 10. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going to SEC for sure. Okay, yeah. sure, for sure. your team SEC. Yeah, I'll go yeah. team SEC. I got blown up by Bama and Ole Miss in my Appreciate day. You, bro. 
You're you're saying it's even between the Big Ten and the SEC? No way. I feel like back in the day, <laughs> SEC was blowing everybody out of the water. But I feel like can you define back in the like day? probably when I was what when you were there when Bama was going back to back to back championships yeah. and stuff like that, like right. Cam Newton area, like all that. So like twenty SEC. probably like tw- two thousand eight up. Yeah, I would say like Ohio State when they went in that twenty fifteen. So like before that, yeah. it was all SEC and, no, and nobody was messing with them. You know, you get. Your teams every now and then where Oregon had a, you know, a good team. But um, I think just all overall talent and all just just overall just football, like you got to go at the SEC for sure. So if you said final answer, this is the dominant conference in culture bowl, you, you would say SEC? SEC for sure. And? Because I agree. You're saying and as in another no, no, conference? I was, I was asking for your vote. Oh, oh, SEC, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so, I mean, so, I would so, say Big so, Ten is, is second, and then I feel, I don't know. I feel like it's hard for me to accept Big 12, Pac-12, a Big 12. 12. Because, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, Big I think 12 and Pac-12 are even. Big 12 don't play no defense, so I can't let Buddy say that. I ain't going to cut. Yeah. Big 12 don't I mean, play y'all, no defense. Y'all saw what happened, happened in the uh, Natty this past year. That was just terrible. Big 12 the real Natty was the playoff before that. Fact. Georgia, that O-State. That wild. Yeah. Hey, so. what, can I ask your take on that? What happened? I mean, that game was crazy, bro. I, I'm not going to lie. Me being, me, you know, Playing at Georgia, transferring to Ohio State. Sure. Um, just the talent they have on both teams. I didn't think the game was going to be that close. I'm, I thought Georgia was going to win by Ohio's, 10 to 14 I mean, points. You know, yeah, just because, I don't know, just the trenches down there. You know, they had Jalen Carter, that boy Nolan Smith. So, they had some athletes. But, um, you know, Ohio State definitely put on in that playoff game. So, you know, I was proud of them. The way my boy CJ played out there, mm-hmm. he – he played crazy that game. He went off that game. Was so. He was under. He was behind you for a period. Yeah. So my last year in college, he came in and he was a freshman. So uh, he sat behind me one year and then two years. This over. last two years, yeah, took over. So you'll be playing soon, bro. Yeah. Small world. Small world. Small world. I'm excited for him though. Excited what he's gonna do this year. He'll be lit. God. God. All right. Bring the juice. When it, last question. God Adversity damn. strikes. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna ask Jalen first because Justin, you got all those fucking philosophy answers. They're really philosophy. good. Philosophy. <laughs> hey, y'all both look good in ju- bring the juice hats. By the way, I look good. Use code hat. bring the juice for twenty percent off to shave your nuts off manscape.com. Bring the juice. Bring the juice. Just juice. Bring the just juice. juice. Use code bring the juice twenty percent off. Can I plug myself real quick? Drink C4 too. Drink C4. Are you a C4 guy? I am. Tell me why you like C4 so much. I feel like it correlates with bring the juice. It helps me bring the juice. Is that hot shit? You know? Is that hot C4 shit? helps me bring the juice. So, like, it's right C4. now, I'm awake, but before I got here, you know, I was just taking a nap in the car. I was you, asleep. So hey, I you, hey I'm not going to lie. Can I be honest? Honest hour? Yeah. You were kind of asleep at first. I was asleep. I mean, I, I came real? in here asleep. Yeah. A little concerned. Yeah, nah. I'm good now, though. <laughs> I'm up concerned. now. You up? He's I'm good. up now. He's good. After we get done with this, I'm going to give me, you know, a little bit of Henny, you know, taco. We had two complete different just feel my guy. No. He brings the juice. Yeah. 20% bring off juice, Manscaped. Baby. Bring the juice. All right, man. What's your question? Let's go. Adversity strikes. What's your response? Automatic response. Muscle memory. Let's go. Adversity strikes. You can't. Da, 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 da. It depends hey, on when the adversity is. It's good is. to ask a DB to, all right, fade ball, you slip, touchdown, you're up seven. First quarter. What? I'm not going to lie strikes. to you. That happened to me against USC my last year. Adversity struck. How do you respond? Mentally. I, I got mean, young I, kids I listening it. to this. I got old people listening to this. Got Bears fans. I'm not gonna lie to you. I feel like it's it's different for everybody because I feel like for me, that don't happen very often at all. (laughs) So especially if I get caught lacking and I fall and I trip, it's like you God gave you that one. God blessed you with that one. I'm gonna accept that and I'm gonna take it. But it ain't never gonna happen again. You're not gonna do it. Is a trip and a slip the same thing in the DB's eyes? It depends on how, why you weather, tripped weather, and why you slipped. <laughs> <laughs> you can get juked and slip. If you got him. Yeah. <laughs> Blur. <laughs> glock, glock, glock. Got you, got you. But, I mean. So, how do you respond? Okay, you got burnt. You're going back to the huddle. You know you're about to get reamed by the DC or the defensive back coach, whoever it might be. You're going to get a couple. What do you, mentally, what are you saying? Hey, next play mentality. We got to reset. Listen, I saw that. I learned from this. Tell me where you're at. I think if it was a mental thing, I think I'd probably harp on it a little more than if it was something physical. I think something physical, I would probably just, honestly, probably, excuse my, excuse my language. I know we were just talking about faith. 
But I feel like it'll probably be like a fuck that, like do it again type of thing. Yeah, I haven't dropped a fucking ass. Um, <laughs> so I think for me, it's just like, I mean, for me, I, I'm competitive. Like somebody like you do something to me and I feel like if you beat me on something like physical, like do it again. And I think like I'm, I'm, I'm pause when I say this. I'm going to keep coming after you. So I mean, <laughs> no, no, you didn't do anything. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm just keep coming after whoever I'm going against. But I feel like something mental. I try to figure out why I was, why I messed up like mentally or why I wasn't locked in where I needed to be locked in. And but I think. But you're wise enough to understand the difference of the two. A hundred percent. I mean, Which yeah. Cause I mean, you can get. It's a sense of professionalism, man. I mean, yeah. Not everyone has that. Some dudes like, get 15 yard fucking penalties. They get pissed off. I mean, that's, I mean, they just like you talked about earlier, though. Control the controllables. Yeah, he fact. can't control these slit, but guess what? He gonna make sure it don't happen again. Fact. He Can not gonna get Nike? blurred on again. Yes. Yeah. yeah, Nike. Nike? Wow. You gonna got the Nike on right now? You need some new ones. I got you, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> boy needs some new ones. I got, ones, you. Huh? Nine and a half, baby. I got you, gang. Where are you? I'm nobody right now, but I'm about to. You about to bring the juice after to, this, yeah. baby? I'm gonna get you some of these. Come around that shoe line. Nice little threes. Give them back though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, finish your spiel, bro. You preaching? Man, I'm, you preaching? Nah, I'm not preaching. I'm, I mean, I'm done, man. I feel like at the end of the day, I feel like you got to be a dog. I mean, if you, you mess up, I mean, at the end of the day, you know things are going to happen. You play. I mean, you go through life. Anything that you do, you go mess up at some point. It's like you got to have, I feel like, a certain mindset, a dog mentality of you're going to keep going. You got to push through. And I feel like a lot of a lot of people don't don't have that. And I feel like to me, it's also how you were how you are brought up. I feel like mm-hmm. a lot of people aren't, Shout aren't to brought mom, up. By the way. Yeah, for sure. hundred percent. But I mean, shoot, I was around other dogs, too. You know, I understand hundred percent. But nah, I mean, my, my, my parents, I mean, even being the youngest, going against my brother. In, in anything and everything, I feel like I was I was bred to to be competitive. I was bred to be to be a dog. I mean, just always wanted to to win. I think a lot of people don't have that. I feel like it goes into what you do when you get beat. When you get beat, it's like no. Nah, I mean, a, a dog not tripping like you. Adversity strikes. You how you going? Spawn, you put your fucking head. You down be a dog. dog. Some got it. That's Some, it. Hey, guess what? Simple as this. Simple as that. Some got it. Some, Some just don't. don't got it. That's a fact. <laughs> you got it, just. I'm about to give you my philosophy answer since you said so i'm gonna stay on that path but (laughs) me i personally believe you go through everything for a reason bro so like all the adversity i've hit through my life like it's made me into the person i am today like i feel like if i didn't go through some things earlier then i wouldn't be able to handle stuff now so i feel like everything works hand in hand um but yeah like my first reaction to you know reacting to adversity is just you know keep going you know don't stop you know um I didn't come this far just to, you know, get left here. So, you know, no matter what happens with me, I'm going to keep going. <laughs> no matter what, I'm t- talking about everything happens for a reason. Like, if I can't play football no more, like, God's got a plan for me. So, just my faith is just so, so strong to where it's like, I feel like anything at this point can 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 happen to me. And, you know, I'll still be grounded, you know, Trust as, as long as I, exactly, as long as I've got the stuff that's I most important to me, my God, my family, like, then I'm straight, so um, I'm I'm good, bro. But uh, yeah, my first reaction is just to keep going. Don't let it phase you whatsoever, and just know that you know in the back end of things later in life, you gonna understand why you did go through that adversity. So yeah, God's plan. God's plan. Great song. I Tell can't us. do this on my own. I, did we just get a sample? Did we just get a sample? No. A little bit. A little bit. So. <laughs> I mean, I had no more questions, but so you were in the choir? Like, what happened? I was. I was in chorus. So, uh, so if I called you, like, grade. can I call you choir boy? Or, like, is that. Is mm, that- nah, let's not do that. <laughs> <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah, let's not do that. Right Wait, how, how, much, how much were you in the choir? Like, like. I felt, like, like, personally, I felt like I was the best singer, but I was in there middle wait, school. Wait, wait. How many people told you you were the best singer, though? Nobody. But I just. You know, well, when you just you know. trust the process. You know, when you just know, like, we had what? Probably like, two or three concerts. I had. Two solos, you know. Two yeah, solos. Yeah. Is there any yeah. footage of that? I don't think so. Could, don't like, think if we Googled it hard is. enough, could we find nah, some shit? I know it's not on Google. The only people that I have it is my parents or something. If they were filming, you send me their number. It. Yeah, I got you. No, don't I got do that. You. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. Would you ever sing the national anthem to your own football game? I was thinking that the other day. I actually would. Wait, I wait, like hold, that would hold, be lit. So I need a national anthem singer for. It. Bring the juice at Table Mount Casino, boxing July fifteenth for the Juice Foundation. We're also supporting Kevy's Vision, which I haven't told you yet. Oh, talk to me. Yeah. So bring the juice. Mm-hmm. Uh, we created this thing called the Juice Foundation, and basically all I want to do 
is bring the juice. We got that hot shit. It's obvious at this point. We've known each other, what, 45 minutes? Yeah. We're about that hot shit. Yeah. I want to help athletes in every way, shape, and form I can possibly can. And I have a few things I want to donate the proceeds to. One of them is I want to donate to my friend Jalen Johnson's Kevy's vision in some way, shape, or form. If he was gonna, if he promised fifty backpacks, I want him to now promise a hundred backpacks. Mm-hmm. That's iron sharpens iron. I say that a lot on this show. Yeah, because I believe in that. Um. Anyways, I needed someone to sing the national anthem before. I got you, bro. As long as my expectations are down here, I don't need to, you know, be coming in there thinking I'm, you know. Would you compare yourself to Fergie and Jesus combination, low key? Fergie and Jesus combination. Who's yeah, yeah. Fergie? Fergie Fer- like the Fergalicious definition. Okay. Make them boys go loco. <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> Do you know Fergie? Do you know Fergie? Your mom, your mom knows who Fergie is. You know who Fergie is? I didn't know who Fergie. Do that again. Bring it back. Bring it back from the top. Fergalicious. Ferg what? Fergalicious definition. Make them boys. Yeah, hey, I know. Hey, it. I know. Hey, it. Over here like, that was a reference that I didn't know. So. So okay. who if you could pair if you were to say I'm a combination of two voices who would you name? Bro, I'm my own voice. Facts. My own voice, dog. Yeah. Like, would you ever put out a Christmas special like Jingle Bells, Santa nah, Claus Rock? Probably not Christmas. Holy. If anything, I'll put out some crazy like some country like some. You country man? I like country. Talk to me, talk to me. It's, it's been growing on me lately. Have Morgan you? Wallen. Oh, he's tough. Zach Bryan. Zach Bryan. I don't know. I, John Party. See, not. He don't know John. New. I'm new to it, so I'm growing with it. <laughs> Morgan Wallen. All I know is Morgan Wallen. He's 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 nice with it. One step at a time. Hope this guy. Hope this guy. You would you would you dual sing a concert for him? Oh yeah. So if we did karaoke tonight, what song would you do? Let me, let me look at. No 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 no. It's got to be off the dome. I don't know. No phone notes. Bullshit. I don't know. I don't play that on Ring of Juice. I don't know, bro. I really don't. Well, you know. So what's your song? Me? Me? Right now? Right now. So I believe in karaoke. I don't want to... S- my voice isn't going to be... What's your song? Like, I want to have a performance. <laughs> What's your song, Frank? If you had to choose one song, karaoke. Probably uh, either... You might as well do Fergalicious. Rockstar by Nickelback. Uh, some Johnny Cash. You guys are hating me. Oh, just, okay, okay, okay. Let me, let me backtrack. I once did a duel with a guy at a bar. Boom, 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 boom. He sings... Ice Ice Baby, mm-hmm. I couldn't I couldn't top it. So I said, "How am I gonna one up this motherfucker?" Yeah, I sung "Forever" by Eminem. Weezy, you did all the, you did different voices. <laughs> did you do different voices? <clears throat> Last name ever. First name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, guess what? I the screen the, well, the TV is behind me with all the words on it. Mm-hmm. Didn't look at it once. So, so you knew it. So that's I, your song. So I took my shirt off. I got kicked out after the fact. But guess what? You won. I won. Come on now. If there's one thing I could end this pod with, and I, can we all agree on this? Winners find a way. That's it. Am I saying anything that's false? No, sir. Guys, before I wrap this up, anything you want to say real quick? Jalen, I'm going to start with you because Justin's the philosopher over here. <laughs> Thanks for your surprise, brother. I appreciate it. You're my guy. Yeah, I appreciate it. That's it. That's all for me. That's it? Yeah. Justin, welcome so to the 559. I hope you enjoyed Bring the Juice. Anything you want to say before we leave? Shoot. Live life to the fullest. Be happy. Uh, praying for all y'all out there. And need Lord knows bring y'all the need juice. It. You heard it here first. Bring yes, the juice. Sir. Get your piss hot. Fire me up. If you don't go to a Chicago Bears game this year, then I don't know what the F you're doing, but uh, we're going to go. We're going to get Jalen's jersey in the studio. Justin's jersey, probably not, but maybe in the studio. We're going to get in the studio. We're going to get sure. in the studio. You heard it here first. I'm quoting him. I'm quoting him. Fire me up. Get your piss hot. We'll see you next week. Bring the juice, baby.